for this. Fantastic. Okay, so for example, streams. Uh, let's let's reroll. Let's reroll. Uh, we we've talked about it's the essential components of a computer. We have also input and output devices that are essential, equally essential to the, uh, to the function of a computer because we cannot. Uh, use a computer without input and output devices for example as we've talked about earlier we need the screen to see what we are doing in the computer we need for example a mouse and a keyboard to use windows effectively okay now as we've talked about there are input devices and output devices there are only two types of devices they, there are some devices that come uh, in as input and output devices at the same time. Let me, for example, uh, let me give you an example. Let's take a smartphone, for example. The screen is both an input device and an output device. Why? Because you use the screen to open apps to uh, navigate through your phone that is considered input and to view the results of your actions in the phone and to watch for example some videos or I don't know it is considered an output device in that case so the screen in a smartphone for example is considered an input and an output device at the same time okay but traditionally speaking now the screen in a computer used to be purely an output device okay for example there are some laptops that have touch functionality meaning they can be interacted with using touch just like a smartphone okay and windows the later versions of windows anyway support touch input okay so you you should not exclude a device from being both just because you traditionally use that device for input sir yes sir Yes, sir. Go ahead. Go ahead, please. Uh, sir, uh, I think the sound like uh, it's cutting. Your sound is cutting. Okay. Allow me to fix that. Just a moment. It's okay. Take your time. Okay, so how about now? Is the sound any clear? Okay, so is the sound any any clearer now? Yeah, it is. Yes, sir, okay. it's clear. We yes, can sir, continue. Question. Yes, yes, please go ahead. So you said you said that the screen is output uh, device, yes. right? Yes, mostly. What about the camera? The, ca the camera will be opened on the screen, so it's gonna be like input device, isn't the it? The camera is considered a, a, a device on its own. Okay. Yes, the but I, it will be open on the screen. Yes, yes, it will be open on the screen. But the screen roll, the screen's roll, 
is to show you what the camera is doing. To show you what uh -huh, the camera yeah. is receiving. The camera yes, receives exactly. light. It receives the image. Okay? So the camera is pr purely an input device. But the screen's role is to show you what the camera is receiving. So the screen, in this case, is considered an output device. Yes. Is okay. it clear? Yes, if, it if is. You, if you have Thank any you, confusion, you can ask me, okay? Yes. So, we, we've said, for, for example, let me give you some examples about uh, some devices and see if you got the point of what we're talking about. For example, what would you consider a keyboard to be? Is it an input or an output device? Input. It's an input exactly. because we use it in order to enter the information. Yes, exactly. Yes. Exactly. How about a microphone? Input also. Yes, input exactly. also. Exactly. Now you're getting the point. Uh, for example, let's go with a speaker. Output. Exactly. Exactly. Now you get the point. Okay? But for example, yes. if some if for example I specify I see for example I say for example if I say a, a touch screen if I specify a touch screen you should it's use, both yes both an input and an output device exactly a touch screen but if I don't specify the type of of the screen you should just consider it as an output device is that clear yes yes sir it's clear fantastic fantastic now now to recap before we start with uh, our segment on software to recap uh, this the, the section or the the section that we we did uh, I, I think the session before the last one yeah. Yes. Uh, about. Yes, example, sir. It's about the cables. S S -S We've talked about. We were yes. talking about uh, storage devices. We said yes, that... SSD and HDD. Yes, exactly. SSDs and HDDs. For example, in this laptop, let's go to Task Manager. Uh, for example, uh, let me first share the screen before I forget. you see the screen yes sir we can see it fantastic now let's go to task manager and see go to the performance tab here we have uh, the essential specs or specifications characteristics of our computer okay here we have the CPU it's an 11th gen Core yes. 5 yeah it gives you specifics that we are not going to delve into for example memory meaning the ram we have 20 gigabytes in this computer and notice we have two disks two storage devices disk 0 which is an hdd notice what is written here an hdd meaning it is slow or slower than an ssd okay so we have disk zero that is an hdd now disk one is an ssd okay now this disk is an nvme ssd meaning it is faster than both a hard drive and a traditional sata ssd okay now you should memorize the speed hierarchy okay the hierarchy goes like this in speed we have all ssds are traditionally faster than all hard drives okay but within the ssd class we have the nvme ssds that are way faster than 
traditional SATA SSDs. Now, SATA SSDs and hard drives both connect to the motherboard through the same interface, meaning the same cable. We use the same cables to connect SATA SSDs and hard drives to the motherboard. Okay? These cables are called SATA cables. Okay? For example, we're gonna see. what they look like they come in this shape generally like an L like this notice here the entrance we have the shape of an L one plugs in to the hard drive uh, or an SSD or the SSD so the sir the SSD end, is related uh... To the motherboard with the cables. Yes, uh, no, traditional SSDs. Uh, for example, let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. Okay? Let's see, go see some images. For example... Sir, I said like those cables. Yeah? These cables, these cables are used to connect SATA SSDs and hard drives to the motherboard. This is their sole role, okay? For example, notice the SSD here. We have an L-shaped part right here. The cable plugs into this part right here. And then there's another cable that is also co called the SATA cable, but its functionality is different than this SATA cable. This SATA cable is used to transfer data from the SSD to the motherboard and vice versa from the computer to the SSD. Okay, so the other end, notice here we have a bigger L shaped part. This is used to supply the SSD with power, with electricity, okay? So we have two types of SATA cables. We have SATA data cables, which are smaller, like the ones we've seen just now, like, like so. One end plugs into the hard drive or the SSD or the SATA SSD and the other end plugs into the motherboard okay the motherboard has SATA interfaces okay so we have the other type of SATA cable which is a SATA power cable it does exactly like it names like like its name su suggests it supplies the SSD or the hard drive with power notice it is larger quite a bit larger than the data cable now we can see a data cable next to a power cable right here the other end of the SATA power cable is another type of connector but this connector goes to the power supply and not the motherboard okay so the power supply is responsible to for supplying the SATA SSDs and hard drives with power they get their power directly from the power supply but the data is between the motherboard and the SSD or the hard drive is it clear or do I need to repeat Sir, do you mean that there is a cable to connect between uh, the SSD and the motherboard? Yes. And there is another cable to connect the SSD to, to the, the power, power supply. supply? Yes, exactly. Ah, okay. not, not only the SSD, the SATA SSD and the hard drives, they are the same concerning the connection types. Okay, They have the same exact connections. 
Okay, so the SATA cable ha has to connect between the SSD and the hard drive to the motherboard. Yes, uh, uh, the SSD and the hard drive to the motherboard. The SATA data cable. It is important to okay. make this distinction. The SATA data cable and we have the SATA power cable. Okay? Two types of cable. The two types of cables. One is responsible for supplying power to the hard drive and SSDs. And the other one is responsible for copying data from and to the SSD. Okay? It is used to okay. connect the SSD or the hard drive directly to the motherboard. Okay? Is it clear? If anybody yes, has any clear, difficulty sir. understanding this topic, we can uh, we can try to simplify it further okay is everything clear yes it is clear sir okay so as for the nvme ssds they have a specialized slot in the motherboard directly they don't need any cables they just go into the motherboard and that's it, it uh, they are operational out of the box okay they don't they don't need external power from the power supply or anything else okay and no cables involved you just stick the nvme ssd uh, to, uh, into its port and it will be operational, okay? For example, if we can find... It goes in just like that, okay? Like so. This is an NVMe slot. And it can take in an NVMe SSD, like this one, and it will be operational out of the box. Okay. Is this clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So now that we've talked about hardware, now we have to go to the software side of things okay now to use a computer you need an operating system to be installed to the storage peripheral of the computer an operating system who can define an operating system for me it's the set of program that we needed in order to use the hardware Exactly. You need an operating system. As the name suggests, it is used to operate the computer. Operate and use the computer. For example, the operating system I'm using here is Windows 10. Okay? Microsoft Windows 10. It is uh, the most used operating system as of today. And... For us to be able to use the computer, we need an operating system. Okay, we cannot use an oper we cannot use a computer without an operating system. I it will turn on and go straight to the BIOS, which is just we can we can't benefit from anything from any hardware of from the computer if we have no operating system installed. For example, to be able to use camera to be able to watch videos, to be able, for example, to do this call, for example, all of this is happening within Microsoft Windows. Okay? Now, inside Microsoft Windows, you have to install some programs to be able to use the computer effectively. For example, if I didn't have a web browser, I'm using Firefox here, I wouldn't be able to do this session, 
okay? Because I need a web browser to go to Google Meet's website and participate, participate in this call, okay? So, for example, here we have these different programs. Each program serves a, a specific purpose, okay? For example, if you need to write documents, the program you should have installed in your PC is Microsoft Word. Okay, so this, this program now is running on top of Microsoft Windows. Is it clear? Now, this is called a program, but the operating system itself is also a program. But what happens is, whenever you turn on your computer, the operating system is loaded from the storage peripherals, either the SSD, the hard drive, and loaded into the RAM. Now, once the oper operating system is loaded into the RAM, you can access your operating system, and you can use your computer. Now, for example, Microsoft Windows comes with so with a few programs pre-installed for example it comes in with a web browser called Microsoft Edge but you don't have to use this one you can install for example like I did for example Microsoft uh, Mozilla Firefox or Google Chrome for example as you can install the programs that you need for example each uh, user. Sir, yes. Sir, it's like similar to what we have on our smartphones, like yes. Android. Exactly. I was going to give you an example. For example, with, with your smartphones, for your uh, concerning your smartphones, you have Android. Android is the operating system used for smartphones generally. Okay. We have Android and iOS. Uh, back in the day, there used to be a Windows Phone but it uh, couldn't catch on, couldn't compete with Android and iOS, so they discontinued it, okay? Now, the two dominating uh, platforms for uh, when it comes to operating systems for mobile devices are Android and iOS, okay? For example, when it comes to uh, smartphones, the operating system itself is Android, and the programs are like the apps, the applications you use, for example. For example, there are applications for Word, Excel, and PowerPoint in, Microsoft, in, Microsoft, in both Microsoft Windows and Android, okay? Uh, for example, Adobe Acrobat has an, uh, an Android app. VLC does also, okay? So, most programs that are used frequently have uh, mobile applications okay now this is only to make the uh, to to give you an example for you to understand uh, to better understand uh, the similarities between uh, the devices and their operating systems okay so every hardware needs an operating system to run Okay, so, for example... Uh, sir, uh, yes. can, I, uh, can I say something? Yes. So, in brief, the explanation of software is an operating system used to run the computer, and it is loaded in the RAM, and within the system we have apps and programs and stuff, for example, Microsoft for uh, computers and Android for phones. Uh, close, you're close. For example, uh, the okay. operating system is a type of software. Not all software is an yeah. operating system. The operating system okay. is a type of software. No, it's like uh, so the software. Sir, yeah. the software is the set of the programs that we use it in order to operate the hardware. Yes. Exactly. To operate the hardware. For example, you need an operating system which is a special kind of software that allows other software to run on top of it for you to be able to use the computer 
okay? So, uh, sir, can you give us uh, other uh, software examples of yes, software? Yes. For example, you have a program called Wireshark. For example, this program def detects uh, traffic through the internet. Okay. This program, for example, we have games. For example, we have, for example, this game called Age of Empires Three. We have another game called Heights of Hearts of Iron 4, for example. Games are also software, okay? We have PyCharm, which is used to uh, make programs in the Python language, for example. We have, for example, the program I'm using now to record this session, which is called OBS. OBS. I'm using this program to record this session as we speak. This is also considered a software. So, for example, if you want to install any kind of software in Microsoft Windows, generally what you would do is you search for an ex executable file. For example, let's, for example, go to the user and then downloads. Let's go to view, file names and extensions. Let's enable that. Now, notice these are the installers of the programs I have installed in this computer. The installer is like the APK for uh, Android. For example, you can uh, install, I don't know if you know this or not, you can install applications manually. You can install applications through the Play Store as you can use other sources to download the application directly and then install it manually. Did you know that? Uh, no, sir. You can, uh, for example, you can download apk files, .apk. They, uh, they come with an extension of .apk. Uh, so, before we go into this, I have to explain something to you. Now, every file, for example, let's go, for example, let's go with a new folder or, or a new text document. Notice now the document is called new document, but the extension is .txt. It is finished with a .txt. Okay, what this means is this is a text document, okay, this is a text document and the operating system will consider it as an, a text document, okay, so other types of, uh, of files, for example, we have video files, for example, we have mp4, dot mp4. If, for example, the file is .mp4, the operating system will consider it as a video file, okay? Now, the operating system differentiates between files with their extensions. The extensions come in the end of a file name. For example, let's say... Let's rename this file. Let's leave the name as is, but let's name it .mp4. Now look. Now Windows, what, what happened? The icon changed. We have a sort of a video icon, meaning that now when I changed the extension, Windows recognizes this file as a video file and no longer as a text file okay for example let's change it again dot pdf for example now notice it recognizes the file as a pdf file it invited me to open the file 
Of course, the file itself doesn't contain anything before because I created an empty file. Even if I played the file as a video, it wouldn't contain anything. Okay, but what I wanted to uh, bring to your attention is that the way an operating system differentiates between files is by their extensions. For example, in smartphones, if the phone finds a file in your smartphone called uh, a name, any sort of name, but it, it, uh, it ends with a .apk file, with a .apk, it considers this file to be an application file, okay? So, .apk files can be installed directly in the phone. Same with Windows. With Windows, we don't have .apk files, but we have .exe files, executable files. For example, notice here, we have PyCharm community .exe. Okay? For example, here, Wireshark.exe. Valina Etcher.exe. Uh, all of these .exe files are the installation files, uh, uh, are the installers, uh, pardon me, the installers for the programs. For example, let's say I wanted to install a program called CPUZ, for example. Here it took me to the website of this program. Okay, now we, Windows x86, that's exactly what I want. Now, here we have setup. Now, when I download this file, notice the file is called CPUZ 2.08 English.exe. The file is finished the name of the file is finished with a dot exe file uh, with a dot exe notice here we are downloading this file we can execute the file to install the program do you want do, uh, should we try this yes please okay let's go ahead and install cpu z we are prompted do you want to run this application uh, yes cpu z I accept the user agreement next and then we choose the path where we want to install the program C program files CPU ID CPU Z this file uh, this uh, path this folder now will contain the files of the program itself okay later we're gonna check out what we find there create a desktop icon Yes, we want to create a desktop icon and then install. Now we can run the program. Okay, let's exit out of here and notice here what we have. We have a program named CPUZ. Okay, it wasn't here earlier, but when I installed the uh, the program notice we have program called cpuz let's run this program notice it gives us information about our computer okay the cpu the motherboard the memory the graphics okay is it clear now uh yes sir yes. uh sir is it does it go the same way with the games for example yes uh pretty much uh for example uh depending on the game itself
for example, there are some games that can be uh, installed directly via installers. As there are games that, sh that, that uh, are installed through other software. For example, uh, for games, we have, uh, for example, Steam, which is the largest platform for PC games. For example, uh, if you buy a game through Steam, you can install the game through Steam itself, through the program itself. It gives you a list of the games you, uh, you purchased and you can install the games as you wish, okay? But there are some, there, there, there is the possibility to install games through uh, installers. For example, all these games that, that are here are installed through installers, regular installers, okay? Now, for example, for uh, Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, you only need to install, for example, uh, don't know if I have it here. Yes. Okay. Office 2021. This is setup.exe. This is the installation file for all these programs, Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. Okay. It is a single installer that contains the files for several pro programs. Okay, but what you should keep in mind is that uh, to, uh, the majority of programs in, in Windows, the, the, to install a majority of programs in Windows, the installers end with a .exe extension. Okay, these are called extensions. For example, we have .pdf. For PDF files, dot doc doc for Word files, dot pptx for PowerPoint files, dot uh, dot mp4 for video files, dot mp3 for music files or audio files. There are multiple types of files, but through the extensions, what you should keep in mind is that any operating system differentiates between the, the, the types of files using the extensions in their names, okay? Notice I tricked Windows into thinking the regular text file we created earlier, uh, I tricked Windows to consider it as a video file by changing the extension from .txt to .mp4 and then again I changed the extension from .mp4 to .pdf and now Windows recognized the file as a PDF file, okay? That's why I did it. I wanted you to figure out how a, an operating system differentiates between types of file. And believe me, all operating systems use this system, okay? They differentiate between the types of, file, the, of files using the extensions in their name. Is it clear? Yes, sir, kind of. Okay, so uh, where, uh, where are you facing uh, the difficulty in understanding? So uh, we said operating system recognize the file through extensions. Yes. Uh, is the extension extension is IPQ uh, Q and e, e X E? Is it this is the extension? No, no, no. Uh, for example, uh, an executable extension is dot exe dot exe. For example, a PDF extension, a PDF file always ends with a dot PDF. For example. Uh, let's say uh, a video file or an mp4 file ends with dot mp4 an audio file so so it's about yes it's about the ending of the name yes the ending of the name uh, for example so it's about you, the you ending of the name it. you can hide it in windows for example i we can you you can hide it in windows for example notice here we have n dot pdf the name ends with a .pdf, so Windows consider it, uh, considers it as a PDF file. 
let's rename it for example to a dot mp3 mp3 now windows considers it as an audio file okay because it ends with a dot mp3 now if we change it another time to a dot mp4 now windows should consider it as a video file okay <laughs> notice the icon changes each time i change the uh, extension okay notice how do you want to open this file keep using this app movies and tv meaning it recognizes this file as a video file now okay this is only to show you uh, how uh, an operating system differentiates between uh, between the different file types okay we, we shouldn't g get lost in, uh, in into this because uh, believe me there are many 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 more informations uh, there is much more information to be had uh, if we uh, go deep into this topic okay but uh, what you should keep in mind simply is an operating system is a software that allows us to use our computer or our hardware okay we need an operating system now the operating system is a software that allows us to use other software on, on top of it okay means that an operating system for example, for example in android android is an operating system but for example when you check your phones you have other software installed on top of android for example all of you have the youtube app all of you have the gmail app all of you have the play store and each one of these applications is a software it is a program an application is a program okay Now, why do we call them software? Because hardware, as opposed to hardware, hardware can be touched. Hardware is material, is made of material, okay? Software is not made of materials, okay? And the software runs on the hardware, okay? Sir. Yes. Yes, go ahead. Sir, sir, is the is the capacity of the software allows us to determine how many or how or how so softwares we can add? Uh, I didn't understand the question. Can you please rephrase it? I mean the the amount. I mean the amount of programs that we can install in our computer. Is it determined by the capacity of the of the hardware, like the the like yes. the hard disk or? Yes, yes. You you can install. Yes. For example, if for example each time you install a program, it takes uh, space. It takes up space in your hard drive. For example, let's go to the hard drive program files, and then. Here we have, for example, Adobe, we have Packet Tracer, which is a program, another program. Notice here are the files of the program. Now, when we click on property, we have this program takes up about 576 megabytes. Okay. Each program takes okay, up from your computer. For example, if you don't have much storage. Uh, naturally, you won't be able to uh, install as many programs as you like. Okay? So, and programs also, uh, for example, take up uh, resources, hardware resources. For example, if I run Microsoft Word, for example, let's go to Task Manager, like we've seen on our first session. For example, let's open Microsoft Word. Notice now the RAM is at 8.5 gigabytes. When I open Microsoft Word, it should climb up higher than that. Notice 
now we are we are at 8.8 .8 gigabytes meaning that we've consumed eight uh, 300 now it is up to 8.9 gigabytes meaning that we've consumed about 400 megabytes of additional memory okay due to microsoft word now uh, each program you have running on your computer consumes resources cpu memory sometimes disk resources now we aren't consuming disk resources because we haven't saved anything in microsoft word okay do you have any questions sir yes i have a question yes how to avoid make how to avoid making the computer slower uh, through the programs that you install for example if i install a lot of programs on my computer how can i avoid the slow operation so uh, generally generally what you would want to do is to make sure you have enough storage and as as i told you earlier using an ssd is miles better than using a hard drive for programs okay you will feel uh, the difference it is night and day okay the second thing you would want to make sure is you you wouldn't want to run out of ram in your computer now for example if this computer had for example, six or four gigabytes of RAM, it will it would be considerably slower because notice here the programs, the programs I have running here, ta are taking up eight point seven gigabytes of memory. If I had four gigabytes, that now that memory wouldn't be enough, and the computer would slow down to a crawl. Okay. So you would want to run out of memory and run out of hard drive space and you should if you have the option you should always use an ssd instead of a hard drive uh, of a hard drive for programs okay if you do these steps now okay sir so i mean uh, your computing experience would be much much better okay sir any other questions Do you guys have any other questions? If not, uh, don't worry. Uh, it all seems daunting uh, on the first in the first place, but we are not gonna go uh, much deeper uh, into these uh, options. Now, I will try to summarize everything we've seen uh, into a PowerPoint or uh, maybe a single. I don't know. Maybe. It could be up to three PowerPoint presentations. Uh, I see what I can do. I will try to summar, uh, summarize what we've done so far. And after I'm finished preparing it, I will send it to you. And you will also find it in Moodle. Okay. So if there are... Uh, sir, where can we yeah. find it? Uh, you can find uh, everything in Moodle. After uh, after I uh, am of this session, I will upload the la la last week's session along with this week's session, and uh, when I have time, I will try to prepare a summary for you to prepare for the exam. Okay, uh, I don't think I have time this week. Maybe next week or the week after. Be uh, essentially before the exams, I will try to prepare a su summary for you. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. No problem. No problem. Take care of yourself. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. Yes, we'll meet again uh, next week, inshallah. Maybe we'll uh, add another session uh, this week. Okay. I will let you know before. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. No problem. Take care. Okay. Thank you, sir. Take care. Thank you, sir. No problem.